Hello there and welcome. This is Lauren Weibert. I'm a Proctor Gallagher consultant and I help teams and individuals connect to their higher side so that they can experience all the joy and love and happiness and success that life affords all of us. I want to welcome you today and today I'm going to be talking about a book recommendation that I have been ranting and raving about for the last several months since it was recommended to me by my mentor Agnes Vivarelli. Um, she is amazing. Check out her channel if you haven't had a chance to just yet. Um, the name of the book is called Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends On It and it is by Kamal Ravikant. And I really cannot say enough great things about this book. I would show you a copy. Normally I have something to show you in my videos, but as far as I know, up until this date, you cannot buy a physical copy of it. But great news, it is very inexpensive. I think it's probably for $5.99 on Amazon. Um, and you can download a copy of the book to your um, device and then listen to it in the author's own voice. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I love the book so much. It is short. It is impactful. The fact that it's so short, I believe you can get through it in about an hour and a half. Uh, that really allows for the repetition. And I've probably listened to it, I want to say, between 10 and 15 times now over the past few months. And every time I repeat the book, I get something new out of it. So. I just want to tell you some of the things that I've learned from it and uh, inspire you to read it because it is phenomenal or listen to it I should say you could you could thumb through it and read it yourself I personally love to listen to it in the author's voice I just think that that does something more for it uh, but again it's an amazing book and I believe that we're all connected and because of that you know, we all kind of go through the same experiences in life from time to time. And if some of these strategies worked for him, which they obviously did, um, I know that they can probably work for you as well. And I will also say that the things that he suggests in the book have definitely worked for me and they've made an impact in my life. So I just want to share some of that with you. Um, to tell you a little bit of my backstory, you know, in, in the beginning of my living here where I live now, I was recruited to come down here and pretty much the day after I moved here, I realized that maybe um, I hadn't done enough planning or I had believed a certain something was going to happen to me, you know, with my income. Uh, long story short, I, I had taken a business opportunity to move here to Tennessee and I very quickly realized after moving that <laughs> the business opportunity that I had taken was not a good one. Um, this caused me to go into anxiety and depression. Um, then I noticed I was getting physically ill. Um, I dealt with a broken relationship um, towards the one year mark of me um, moving here and um, also the death of, of someone who was very, very close to me. Um, these are all the same concepts that were covered in Kamal's book. And so when I was reading through it, it was like, oh wow, this definitely rings true because I've lived through this exact same thing and I have felt because of those events that happened to me like utter crap <laughs> and it was really hard for me to overcome those things especially because at the time I had I had no idea that this book even existed or I didn't know how to help empower myself and fix my own you know life and my way of thinking um, Kamal said in in one of the lines of the book he said to say I was depressed would have been a good day <laughs> And that really resonated with me. I thought to myself, wow, I've been there. So not only does he tell about his experience of where he was in his life, but then he shares the most important part, which is the solution. And he talks about 
how the mind is a very powerful thing, especially the subconscious mind, and that's where it all begins. Um, when people work with me, I teach them about how we actually have two minds, the conscious mind and then the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is responsible for probably about 96% of what we do all day, every day. It's called our paradigm. And a paradigm is just a set of patterns, it's, it's habits, it's behaviors that are rooted in the subconscious mind that we really don't have a whole lot of control over unless we have the awareness that that exists. So Kamal basically covers this in his book, but in his own words. And so I wanna read you an excerpt from that right now. So in the chapter titled, Why Love?, he says, why not I like myself or I accept myself? Why oh why does it have to be love? Here's my theory. If you've ever been a baby, you've experienced love. The mind knows it on a fundamental, even primal level. So unlike most words, love has the ability to slip past the conscious and into the subconscious where the magic happens. What if you don't believe you love yourself? Doesn't matter. Your role is to lay down the pathways, brick upon brick, reinforce the connections between the neurons. The mind already has a strong wiring for love. The body knows it well. It knows love nurtures, that love is gentle, that love is accepting. It knows that love heals. Your job is not to do any of those, your job is purely to love yourself, truly and deeply. Feel it again and again. Make it your single-minded focus. The mind and body will respond automatically. They don't have a choice. Here's the best part, one that makes me smile as I write this. As you love yourself, life loves you back. I don't think it has a choice either. I can't explain how it works, but I know it to be true. When you find yourself using the word magical to describe your life, you'll know what I'm talking about. So there you have it. In those two pages of the book, he touches on all of the concepts that I teach people about through Proctor Gallagher Institute. Furthermore, I can totally resonate with this passage that I just read. I have been through some really, really difficult things in my life, and I only wish that I had been equipped with this book, for example, and all of the knowledge that comes with it. You know, some days after having read this book, I was still going through difficult times and struggling you know, with thoughts that were in my own mind and, and things that were happening in my outside world because remember, everything that happens in your outside world, it's, it's kind of like there's a lag time between when your thoughts created those things and when they actually happen. So, you know, here I am looking at my present results and, and being trapped in my own thoughts and the, the words, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself are so powerful um, you know, it, it's like automatically flipping a switch and he's right. You don't have to believe yourself that you actually do love yourself when you start saying this. Oftentimes it's, you know, you, t you feel like you're telling yourself a lie. Like, what do you mean? I don't love myself. Like, I don't even really know if I like myself right now. Believe me, I've been there. But if you tell yourself a lie often enough, you will inevitably believe it. And honestly, this practice of telling myself that I love myself, as silly as that may sound to some people on the surface, that has been not only just something that has gotten me through my day a few times, you know, I can feel my mind going down a yucky path, um, one that's not going to serve me. I remember to just flip the switch, change the channel, and tell myself I love myself, I love myself, I love myself, and get myself into that habit, which is what he suggests in this book. Then, when that becomes the new habit, 
and you catch yourself building it into your daily practices, you purpose to build it in as a daily practice to your self-love and your self-image building routine, then it feels like, I don't know, sometimes I describe meditating or repeating affirmations, it feels kind of like mouthwash from my mind. Like, it's just, it's that foundational, you know, clean palette, fresh canvas, and I can build upon that. So that's part of what it's done for me. But, you know, some of the other notes that I wrote here, is the repetition of that meaningless? Or going back to if you don't believe yourself when you're telling yourself that, also remember it's not just about the repetition. Believe me, that definitely helps. But the more that you can get into the feeling, remember Neville Goddard says feeling is the secret. You have to be able to eventually get yourself to the point to get the most benefit out of telling yourself, I love myself, I love myself, is to attach meaning to it, to attach those feelings um, to it. And so something that I do that helps is to think about someone or something that I love. For me, the easiest thing are my beloved dogs. I can always conjure up those feelings of love. You can probably see it on my face right now. When I think of my dogs and I think of how good it feels to pet them and look at their cute faces, it's so easy for me to feel that love that I have for them and that I know that they have for me as well. And then I take that feeling and I transfer it to myself because remember, the subconscious mind can't tell the difference. Your conscious mind can, which is the one that's hearing you when you're initially saying it and telling you, I don't believe that. But your subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between something that you're conjuring up or something that's actually happening. So remember, feeling is the secret in the repetition of the telling yourself, I love myself, I love myself. So he asks a question later in the book and he says, I think that this is so powerful here. If I loved myself truly and deeply, would I let myself experience this? So I wanna repeat that. If I loved myself truly and deeply, would I let myself experience this? So I wanna challenge you with a question. When was the last time that you asked yourself exactly that or something like that? Most of us go through life and we get stuck in these patterns and here I'm speaking from my own experience as well. You know, the year that I moved here and my business was failing and my relationships were falling apart and money was flying out the window and, you know, life seemed like it was crashing down around me. Never once did I think to even ask myself the question of, if I loved myself, would I let myself experience this? But ultimately, it wasn't until almost halfway through the next year that I finally was able to come to that realization of, wow. And, and the way that I think that I worded it at the time was, I'm really miserable. Uh, I probably shouldn't stay in this role any longer. I probably shouldn't stay with this failing business because I'm not getting anything out of life that I want to get out of it. And so for me, it was a portion of my survival at that time, I realized that if I stayed in that role, if I let myself stay there in that yucky place um, in life, I was not going to be serving myself. I didn't really connect the dots of if I love myself, would I let myself stay in this yucky place? But that was ultimately what happened and that was powerful. It was scary to leave a role that I was comfortable with. Um, it was scary to, you know, take the next step and, and to question parts of my own identity. But ultimately, that was the most self-loving thing that I could do. And I think that's an easy way to ask a version of that question is, what's the most self-loving thing to do in this situation? Um, if you look at life through the lens of, 
how will this be me showing love to myself or is this me showing love to myself? Uh, we're going to get so much farther if, if, we, if we live life from the standpoint of self-love. If you're coming from a place and you haven't taken care of yourself for years, again, speaking from experience, if you're coming from a place of trying to pour from an empty cup, that's what people say, um, it's just not going to work long term. You're burning yourself out. You're hurting yourself. So ask yourself the question, what's the most self-loving thing to do in this situation? Or ask it like Kamal did, which is, if I loved myself truly and deeply, would I let myself experience this? Tough question. Think on that one for a little while. So, in summary, why am I sharing all of this? It's always the same end goal. I want you to be able to empower yourself. And if you don't know how to empower yourself, then you can borrow my self-empowerment that I can lend you. Borrow my belief in you that you are able to do this, to do those right things for yourself, to love yourself, to empower yourself. That's the purpose of this whole channel. That's the purpose of my life's work. I never realized for several years of my adult life that I could empower myself. I thought that other people owed me love or approval or things like that. I was always looking around and trying to figure out if someone else was okaying the things that I was doing. I didn't realize that it was up to me. And what that does when you live in that space of, of not knowing that it's up to you, it causes a loop of disappointment. You know, if you're looking to your loved ones to constantly be giving you that love or giving you that approval, you, you're, it's kind of like how Anyas uh, describes it. You're using other people as your oxygen tank. And that's never a good long-term solution because people don't want that responsibility of having to take care of someone else. They're busy taking care of their own selves. So, you know, again, realizing it took me years to realize that love does not come from the outside. It doesn't come from another source. It, it can always be generated from within. And that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate the meaningful relationships that I have with other people or the, you know, the meaningful relationships that I have with my beautiful fluffy dogs. Of course, I appreciate those things. But those feelings of love that I generate for myself, self-respect, self-esteem, self-worth, all of those things that I can give myself that just means that if I know how to give that to myself, I'm going to be that much more of an effective person in my relationships, you know, whether they're romantic relationships, family relationships, friendships, business relationships. And I know that uh, some people look at me and they kind of think of me as a business advisor. That's not the only thing that I can do. Um, but some people may be watching this video and thinking, Lauren, what are you talking about? What does love yourself like your life depends on it have to do with, you know, business? Um, <laughs> the answer to that question is everything. And again, it's coming from this place of, I have lived it. And if I go back and I look at my whole life through the lens of what, if I truly loved myself at that time in my life, would I have let myself experience this X, Y, Z or whatever thing that had happened to me? I'm so glad that I know how to love myself now. So that's what I want you to be able to take away from this. I want you to know that you can create a new paradigm. You can train your subconscious mind to do whatever it is that you want to do. And just remember that self-love, self-esteem, self-worth, your entire self-image makeup, that's the basis for you being able to get anything you want in life. It doesn't matter uh, what your goal is. If you don't have the self-image to back that up, if you don't love yourself, even if you achieve that goal, it might not end up sticking if you don't know how to maintain the self-image and the self-love 
that is required to keep that going on a day-to-day -day basis. That's why you see relationships failing, businesses failing, you know, other, other bad things happening is because people don't have the self-image and the self-love to support those things long-term. So know that you can create a new reality. Know that you are the one that's in charge. And if you need help doing any of those things, if you need some direction, a place to start, contact me, please. I would love to talk with you. I can do a 30-minute consultation at no charge. All you have to do is email me and let me know, hey, Lauren, this is something that I really want to work on. When can I get on your calendar? So I will put the links to everyone that I mentioned um, in the comments. You can find me at my website. I will put my email link there below. I will tag on yes, she is wonderful and she's made such a huge difference in my life. I love her, she's amazing. And she was the one book. So I will put that link in the comments as well. Thank you for watching. It is my pleasure to serve you and I appreciate your time. Talk with you soon.